I'm Joel Gore from Scion Research Corporation. I'm speaking today with Rick Benoit. Rick is a te technology marketing manager with Intel, but we're talking today not about Intel and its products, but about something called Web3D and its CAD working group. Rick, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And could you tell us a little bit about what Web3D is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, about a year ago, we came to the COPUS conference, and we had put together um, some ideas about how we could stimulate uh, the use of CAD and uh, 3D on the Internet, as well as, uh, as, well as the Web. And what we were wanted to do is find a means by which we could get 3D more ubiquitous in, in you might say, the, the web internet environment. Uh, as you know, it's been a very fragmented marketplace uh, right now. There isn't a whole lot of use on the internet with uh, 3D at this point in time. It just hasn't taken off like we all, I think, would hope that it had. Um, certainly, Intel has some interest in making that happen from a performance and application standpoint. So we went, uh, we came we came to the conclusion that, you know, CAD was a, probably a very fruitful treasure chest of 3D data already in, in place. The problem with it is, or the concerns with it from an Internet perspective, is certainly the size of the data, the, how complex it is, and, you know, not having the pipeline to, to ship it down to other users other than engineering and design. So we said, well, is there a way that we might be able to find some keys to unlock that treasure chest of data? and bring more content to different applications other than engineering and design into the marketplace. And so we came to the COFIS conference about a year ago and talked to a lot of the CAD vendors that you had here and some of the users, and it kind of, you might say, uh, catalyzed us to say, hmm, we might be onto something here. As a result of that, we went out to the end user market. We talked to companies like HP, Boeing, BMW, um, General Motors and said, hey, is this something that you're interested in? Would you like to have a means by which we could potentially provide a format for some downstream ap applications like sales, marketing, maintenance, customer service, that type of thing, for the visualization and the repurposing of original CAD data to be utilized in those applications? With a resounding yes, they said absolutely. They said, you know, we've tried to get the ISVs to address this problem, but they, they look at it from a proprietary standpoint. We need a means by which we can share that data across multiple uh, software platforms, if possible, as well as allow other users to see this data. The great thing about it, Joel, was the fact that we discovered that there are millions upon millions of dollars that are going to be spent in this area hmm. for those specifically ap applications. Uh, surprisingly enough, a company like Boeing, you can imagine how difficult it is, what a labor-intensive process it is for them to keep manuals updated for all the different configurations and airplanes they have. Little known fact, they have one of the largest printing facilities in the world just to do that purpose. They have spearheaded some projects already to provide 3D simulation to people on the shop floor, whether they be in Singapore, Malaysia, because they have another problem to deal with, language. They do everything in English, and imagine that could be the third or fourth language for the person that's trying to do the maintenance procedure on that particular airplane. If we can find a means by any place, anywhere, any time, for them to be able to tap into an Internet uh, connection, and download the information they need and see the simulation of that in assembly and how I remove that particular panel door off, off without having to go to a t 2D schematic or trying to read it in a language that I may not be familiar with. Imagine the cost savings and, and, the, and, the, and the maintenance uh, procedures of how well they'd be enhanced from that. We heard that story from everybody we talked to, not because they were building airplanes, but right. you know, you got to maintain air, uh, automobiles. Whatever product set is, you know, it's kind of like what's happening in PLM today. They're looking at the entire life cycle, the management of that product across, you know, from start to finish when they actually, you know, no longer want to maintain it. But to maintain it, we want to help, you might say, promote and catalyze that particular aspect of the industry to bring that kind of data down to the people that need it. 
and open up uh, a whole new world for 3D that hasn't been witnessed today by using the original data by which the product was actually designed and built from. So then is Web3D about uh, data formats? Not exactly. Um, the reason that we went to the Web3D consortium was this. Um, we wanted to go to a, a, a organization that had significant familiarity with the ISO process. If you take a look at a company like Boeing, I'll use them as the example here, um, ISO certification for anything that they do is very critical because of the global nature of, of the business that itself. So we needed to go to an agnostic type of organization to make that happen. Web3D Consortium seemed to be the right place for that. Um, the other thing is they have experience in getting ISO certification, as well as we felt that they would be a, a, a means by which there was always, already some industry recogni recognition for what they're doing, and we felt that this would be a, a, a potentially good fit. So we went out and recruited multiple companies. We've probably got uh, 22, 25 organizations to date uh, that are participating in the working group. And our focus and purpose right now is to build a format, a specification, release it to the marketplace with an example player by which this data could be viewed. Now, when you say a, a format and a specification, uh, that means, does that include like a translation from an existing format? Um, we are looking at all different angles at this point in time. Um, we uh, know that there are formats uh, out there in the marketplace. Uh, what we want to do is bring something that's robust and addresses the end user requirements. We went out and basically had the end users tell us, what does this format need to do for you? Built a document, sent it out, and said the specification needs to be written to satisfy these requirements. Is VRML a contender? Um, it's certainly one that we're taking a look at. Um, one, of the, one of the things that concerns us a little about uh, VRML is the fact that it's a little broad uh, for, I, we think, our purposes at this point in time. The issue being is that VRML was written as a format for 3D on the web. We're looking at a very specific, narrow focused, um, uh, you might say, uh, application that we're, where you want to take the CAD data and transmit it and translate it into this format. VRML wasn't really designed necessarily to do that, but we do think there are some good things there that we might pick and choose with some other formats that already exist and see if we can't kind of take a smorgasbord type of approach and bring the best that's out there into this format without sacrificing again and using as, as, as our, you might say, mantra that the end user requirements are what we have to address and, and, and manage to. So then would you uh, publish a specification and invite CAD vendors to produce uh, output drivers that would essentially print to that specification? We would love them to. <laughs> um, they're digging their heels in a little bit. Um, and I think the one, one of the points I'd like to make is that it is not our intent by any stretch of the imagination to step into their space. They know the engineering design world to, to the degree that, you know, we can't even begin to, to address. We want to run something that's parallel and complementary to that. We're looking at downstream applications of sales and marketing, documentation, maintenance, service, customer service, that type of thing where someone in that ver world or environment doesn't need the detailed diagrams or models that you see that come from CAD data, but needs something that looks like the finished product. So that if I'm trying to help someone put together, say, you know, a piece of furniture from a, a, a manufacturer, that we've used the original CAD data to create the model by which they're looking at it, but the model that they're looking at actually looks like the product that they're, they've got in front, that the customer has in front of them. Now, does uh, Intel's interest portend perhaps uh, some uh, hardware participation in the solution of this problem? Um, potentially, uh, potentially, yes. Um, I work in a, a, a research lab, and our time horizon is somewhere to five to seven years. So, so absolutely. I mean, our, certainly our interest is to drive, you know, applications into the marketplace that require higher levels of performance whether it be at the server level, the desktop level, or the handheld level. 
um, our interest is to is to really get people motivated to understand really what the power of the of, of that pro those processors can do for them. And so within uh, the five to seven year time frame, I think even with uh, Schmidt's law that says that bandwidth doubles every year mm -hmm. for high end users, mm -hmm. we're we're still looking at bandwidth constraints vis a vis very large files. So just exactly. throwing out a, an idea that is probably one of many that is under consideration, uh, would, would there be the possibility of maybe something like a, um, a, an ACIT for differencing to allow you to send just changes in the original 3D model down to the marketing people and have something on the other end that would uh, incorporate those changes into the local model or help reconstitute it? Um, that certainly would be uh, one of the considerations. I mean, what we want basically to happen is that when maybe the model's recreated or changed, that it, it gets updated regardless of where it's residing, even to the point that if it's even in a PowerPoint presentation, that basically that could be reflected some way, shape, or form. That's an ideal, certainly, solution that we're going to hopefully drive towards. I'm not sure we're going to be able to address that the first time around. but. Uh, well, this is fascinating, Rick, and I think it's uh, definitely something that users would support. And I, I was just in a session right now where we were saying, you know, what vendors, reluctant vendors need to be drawn along the path is a couple of large users to just say, you know, I really need this. And then somehow reluctance changes to alacrity because <laughs> when sales depend upon it. So I applaud your efforts, and especially as they integrate into the existing banner of uh, ISO cer certification. And uh, I think uh, I think Cyan Research definitely would like to uh, get behind what you're doing and help you with it. Well, we'd certainly appreciate your support, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what story I'll be able to tell you a year from now. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you so much. You for bet. Being Thanks here for today. your time.